Both President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin calling the high-stakes meeting productive. This despite issues remaining unsolved. Biden said afterwards he did what he came to do, while Putin waxed poetically to reporters. Growing pushback against big tech. Both sides of the aisle agree a big tech monopoly is a threat to the economy and must be broken down. This comes as there's also growing bipartisan talks on infrastructure. And Texas Governor Greg Abbott is continuing the border wall started under the Trump administration. This comes as Florida is sending in help. Governor Ron DeSantis is going to send his state's law enforcement resources to deal with the border crisis in Texas and Arizona. Tune in to Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. Bipartisan efforts underway at the nation's capital. Infrastructure inches towards consensus, while a new bill aims to outlaw anti-competitive practices that have created big tech monopolies. But before we get into all that, an update on President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin's face-off in Geneva, Switzerland. While the meeting got off to a chaotic start, with press and security shoving each other, the rest went ahead as planned. And Putin even waxed poetically during his solo press conference, telling reporters in life there is no happiness in life. There is only the mirage of it on the horizon, so we'll cherish that. Both sides declared the meeting productive. Putin called the talks constructive. And Biden said they were good and positive. Despite the upbeat outlook, a range of issues remain on the table. One key issue, cybersecurity, remains unsolved. Both sides say there will be further talks. Biden wants Russia to take responsibility for cybercriminals in the country, noting the recent ransomware attacks on meat processing plant JBS and Colonial Pipeline in the U.S. The FBI blames a Russia-backed hacking group for both attacks. While Putin agreed to begin consultations, he also fired back, asking, where's the evidence, where's the proof? Putin also said Biden was, quote, very different from his predecessor, Trump. Among the topics discussed, jailed opposition leader Alexei Navalny and two Americans, Paul Whelan and Trevor Reed, who Biden says are wrongfully imprisoned in Russia. Biden says he will follow up with this later. Other topics included human rights issues and the recent Russian cyber attacks against U.S. infrastructure. And Russia and the U.S. have also agreed to reinstate their ambassadors. Biden called the meeting a success, saying, I did what I came to do. And while Biden changed his tune about Putin from calling him a killer months ago to calling him a worthy adversary before the summit, what about the Chinese leader? Biden has been raising concerns about Beijing's willingness to help find the origins of the CCP virus. He also seems to be taking a harder stance towards Beijing. He told reporters yesterday that China's leader isn't an old friend. In the past, Biden has highlighted his close relationship with China's leader. In 2013, Xi Jinping even called Biden his old friend. A reporter asked Biden if he'd call Xi old friend to old friend and asked to let investigators in again. Biden seems to have shifted his stance, saying, let's get something straight. We know each other well. We're not old friends. It's just pure business. Last month, Biden ordered aides to find the origin of the virus. Biden said the U.S. is looking at different theories, including the Wuhan lab leak theory. Now, turning to the nation's capital, U.S. lawmakers want to outlaw anti-competitive practices that have created big tech monopolies. Both sides of the aisle agree a big tech monopoly is a threat to the economy and must be broken down. There's five bills. And while the bills don't mention any company by name, there's four companies that fit the bills. Amazon, Facebook, Google and Apple. Chairman of the House Antitrust Subcommittee, Representative David Cicilline, says digital monopoly is holding back our entire economy. The House Antitrust Subcommittee found that big tech oligarchs are squashing competitors by buying them out or replicating their products. That's after a year and a half long investigation into the four tech giants. For example, they found that Amazon uses data collected from its own independent sellers to replicate and promote its own Amazon-made products. The five bills aim to regulate the digital marketplaces and prevent monopolies. The bills will ban self-preferencing, reduce big tech dominance, eliminate conflict of interest, promote competition, and aggressively enforce antitrust laws. This is the biggest move yet to make big tech smaller. If these bills pass, tech giants will have to restructure business practices or break apart. 
And now let's turn to infrastructure. There's a growing group of bipartisan senators working on infrastructure. The group of senators has doubled in size to 21 members. It now includes 11 Republicans, 9 Democrats and 1 Independent. The group includes Senators Susan Collins, Mitt Romney and Kristen Sinema, among others. The group sought support for its proposal on Wednesday. They said in a statement, We look forward to working with our Republican and Democratic colleagues to develop legislation based on this framework to address America's critical infrastructure challenges. The White House said its briefing with Democrats who back it was productive and encouraging. The proposal comes in at under $1 trillion. The move comes as Biden is expected to re-engage at home following his meeting with Putin. The proposed $2 trillion American jobs plan will be paid for through tax hikes. Biden has indicated tax hikes on the wealthy, raising the corporate tax rate at 28 percent to pay for the package. But it's been seeing fierce pushback among Republicans and some moderate Democrats. Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell calling it a Trojan horse, and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy calling it the biggest mistake Democrats could make. Moderate Democrat Senator Joe Manchin has also indicated he is not likely to support the package if it's partisan or has such high tax rates. That's because some Democrats have suggested using budget reconciliation to pass the package through with zero Republican votes. That's how the $1.9 trillion COVID relief package was passed. While Manchin has signaled before he doesn't support doing that again, his stance seems unchanged. This comes after some Democrats try to secure a commitment from him on the package. That's in exchange for their support on a smaller bipartisan proposal that Manchin helped make. Manchin told reporters on Capitol Hill if they don't like it, they should vote against it. That should not be conditional. It should be based on the merits of what the bill is. Manchin and Romney's deal on infrastructure is pending approval from the White House. Romney's hoping for broader Republican support beyond just the 10 needed to bypass the filibuster. And while bipartisan support slowly rises, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is working on ramming the bill through, whether with or without Republican support. He met with 11 Democrats on the Senate Rules Committee Wednesday. He told reporters a day earlier, there are members with very justified views. Whatever you can do bipartisan, you should try. Adding, but alongside that is the view that that won't be enough. But whether there's enough support for the bill to pass on partisan lines still remains unclear. And let's leave infrastructure for now and turn to the southern border. Texas Governor Greg Abbott is continuing the border wall started under the Trump administration. He says it's a federal responsibility they will need to take upon themselves to protect Texans. He says he's approved $250 million to start building the wall. He says Texas stands ready to build a wall in Texas, and we have begun the process of hiring a manager to oversee that project. We will look first at using state property and donated private property. This comes after the White House announced last week that it officially authorized more than $2.2 billion in military funds that were diverted during the Trump administration back to the Pentagon, while the Biden administration officials have characterized the Trump-backed wall as wasteful spending and ineffective. Abbott is now demanding the Biden administration return border property that was seized by the federal government for building a wall to his state. Abbott writes, I write now to demand that you immediately return to Texans any land taken by the federal government, but not used for building a border wall. The governor says illegal immigration is hurting Texans. He signed three pieces of legislation, one of which was to hire a manager to oversee the construction of the wall. Abbott says this job is the federal government's responsibility, but one they are refusing to take care of. He blames the current administration for the crisis, saying, and make no mistake, the border crisis that we are dealing with right now is the direct result of the open border policies that have been put in place by the Biden administration. Remember that the border was far more under control under the Trump administration until President Biden came in and removed the Remain in Mexico policy. Texas has more than a thousand miles of border, some with and without border wall. Abbott says the legislature has already dedicated more than a billion dollars to border security. And the Sunshine State is sending help to the border. Florida is sending in help. Governor Ron DeSantis is going to send his state's law enforcement resources to deal with the border crisis in Texas and Arizona. 
That's because the governors of Texas and Arizona invoked an interstate emergency compact last week and asked other states to send in law enforcement officials and other supplies. DeSantis said Wednesday that multiple agencies and sheriff's offices in his state have already committed to helping out, and they are sending in aid. He says, we believe securing the southern border is important for our country, but specifically, it will benefit the people of Florida to be able to get this under control. He adds that in Florida, they support law enforcement, and they believe in funding law enforcement, and helping the two border states is the right thing to do. Florida is the first state to respond to Texas and Arizona's calls for help. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you soon.